Uh, today we're going to talk about optimized experience of experience optimization, or as we <laughs> all know it, uh, as the smart target module. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar who I am, I'm Mark Munich, I'm senior consultant at Accelerate, and I've been working with smart target for about four or five years almost, since the Fred Hopper days. So brace yourself, this is going to be... Uh, <laughs> A talk about me raging or being salty that Fred Hopper got axed in one way or another. Basically, we're going to talk about what is OXXO. Uh, we're going to talk about current challenges and uh, we are going to analyze what can be changed in, in the Smart Target or XO module to be even better, uh, more user friendly. And we're going to have some live demos about uh, some scripts. And uh, updating of items in Fred Hopper. So, yeah, what is XO? It's not Facebook ads, it's not um, showing you uh, a razor when you go to, to Facebook to buy it. Basically, it's targeting your profile and serving you a specified content which you uh, want to achieve. So, uh, this is a fancy def definition by SDL and it's available on docs, but basically when we try to explain it to our customers, we always say this is a way where you can achieve that your persona gets the content that it needs or wants to achieve. But uh, in most cases it's not really useful or not really applicable in real practices. Why? Because the companies have a problem of identifying their own customers and profiling them in segments. So uh, they have a great tool, which uh, I can 100% say that it's a fantastic tool, but they don't know how to profile their market. They don't know how to uh, define exact persona. Uh, is it uh, a granny that's visiting your site or is it a Kylie Jenner fan? So yeah, it's something that we need to know of. And then we need to do something about that. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm that girl on the right. Not that I'm saying that I'm a girl, but I'm that girl on the right. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe. Well, basically, I love Red Hopper and I think that it's a great tool, but it's not used correctly. So, that was one of the reasons that it didn't fit with the stack of SDL, and I get the point why it was removed. Uh, and with the newer, fancier model, which fits really nicely. But yeah, it's still um, something that I love and will still be using for, for a few years more. And yeah, what can we do about that? So this is one more meme about me being salty. So. Why is it so hard to debug the things in, in Smart Target? Well, basically, you always get the guy from, from content team who says, uh, I've created everything that you said. Uh, I've created Smart Target promotions. I published the content in all the publications. Everything is working correctly, but something is not okay. So then you are okay, let me take a look. It will take some time, and then you are getting all the things checked out. So what are you checking? Basically, you're checking targeting tab. Is the promotion created correctly? Is it um, setting? Uh, is uh, are all the components published? Uh, is the are the triggers defined correctly? Uh, do you have it defined for all the publications that you need? You also check Fred Hopper, or in newer versions Elastic. So you're checking for Fred Hopper. Uh, is the business XML published? Are the query servers? in line with the indexer and so on and so forth. Is everything available? Then you go to claims to check are all the claims forwarded properly generated and so on and so forth. And there are a lot of things that can go wrong here. And sometimes it's just that you are wanting to see one promotion, but you're getting totally another one because another one is also fitting into your criteria for, for the content that will be served. And this can be really tiresome because sometimes you, you can have not 10, 20 promotions defined in the EXO module. You can have a hundreds of them or thousands of them. Why? Because 
of infamous or triggers which makes you create a double of the of the promotions that you want to to have so yeah how can we how can we fix it at least at least a bit so first we can keep fred popper nice and tidy so that we don't have issues on live yeah so how we did how we did it well basically we implemented scripts for daily restarts of query servers and weekly re-index procedure either by provided documentation from sdl or there is a weekly re-index with capture export that's the one which is also provided by fred hopper support and it's generating the uh, indices based of the current indices so using fast assembly it's a lot faster because you don't need to copy all the processed files which can take up to millions on live uh, on live projects and basically this keeps fred hopper cluster performing and not crashing uh, there is a bug in that version of fred hopper both for 2013 and 8. Point five or eight point one where it was mandatory to have weekly reindex procedures and daily restarts which we figure out only when we contacted for our support. So yeah. And then the developers can focus on other things. Uh, and yeah, one more important thing is that you need to know how many items you're going to have in your Fred Hopper cluster or catalog sorry so that you can know how many indices you're going to have and what is their memory footprint footprint going to be so once we figure that out we can basically analyze our fred hopper access so what we also got from the fred hopper support is one fancy script which we modified it's the log analyzer script which analyzes uh, Fred Hopper biz log for the requests and basically it creates some statistics over that query instance over some period of time so you can uh, check more of, of the logs and you can basically export that and create some fancy uh, fancy tools so yeah So yeah, this is the report that I used to, uh, to generate and it has some, some data which then by magic I export into Excel and then all my stakeholders say, wow, what, what have you done? This is magic. Show me the numbers, okay? Show me the Excel report, you're the man. Yeah. So, yeah, I can also check what's the structure of my fast responses over, over some period of time or my slow responses. So yeah, if you have Excel, then, then you are the man. So let's, let's move on. So what's the next thing? The next thing is the infamous blueprint hierarchy change. So. Uh, whenever you have a market where allowed, you create a new publications, you need to update all the Fred Hopper promotions manually to if they are defined for all child publications per certain publication. And then editors flip out, basically. They always say, why I have to do this manually? Why I have to open each of the three, four, five hundred promotions, do saving close because it's a manual action? Then they say, and then you say, okay, yeah, that is that is tiresome so what you need to do basically you need to uh, modify business xml file when i created a simple script which basically uh, checks the metadata promotion that is one in uh, business xml which has info of all the other promotions and if they have included no child and basically i just add a new publication if it fits the criteria and it fits the criteria if one of its direct or indirect parents uh, is in some of the smart target promotions and the including no child is true i also changed the trigger types xml to allow adding of new promotion i just update business xml to save and close and restart of the indexer and basically that's that the exo management service picks up the changes of the indexer and you see everything updated so we can show a short demo of it, but basically what's, what I do is 
have a, a simple solution in dark mode, of course, in Visual Studio. So, yeah, let's see if it will work. If it won't work, then, yeah. Hopefully, the Wi Fi works. So the demo gods are not are not good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, public. So probably something related to the firewall. Basically, this is my demo machine. It's with three smart target promotions, and all of them are yeah. well, still not okay. We can check the logs later or try again. But in any case, if you trust my word on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would like to address one more point uh, since the demo evidently went really, really great. And that's what we should or would like or need to have in a future updates of, of the EXO modules. We need to have info about invalid promotions. So this info is already available or was available in the Fred Hopper over the campaign. So you were able to see which promotions were invalid. So what is an invalid promotion? It's a promotion which content has been unpublished or is not available anymore or anything happens. So you should have info on that in the UI. Also, you need OR triggers for promotions. Well, basically, you need to be able to create a complex uh, evaluation expression so that you don't have to duplicate the promotions. And I, I need to be able to define promotions for user who is using Chrome or is above 60 years old and not have two of them. So I also need where used for, <coughs> sorry, for promotions or for items. I need to know if a component or folder is being used in some of the smart target promotions so that I can debug more easily. I want preview functionality for EXO promotions, one that is outside of Experience <coughs> Manager. I want full security model, model over EXO module, one that uh, s uh, basically reflects my user, so if I'm not able to see a folder within a Tridian, I shouldn't be able to select content from that uh, folder when I'm creating smart target rules. And I want content porter for EXO promotions. I want to be able to copy uh, promotions from, for example, dev environment to QA. This is something that we're planning to implement, <coughs> of course, using web dubs. So basically, we will export all the promotions, info on the items, then import promotions and items if possible to the correct publication. So that is something that uh, that uh, editors ask quite and often times. So yeah, that's that. And if I'm not mistaken, that's within 15 minutes with a failed demo. So. <laughs> yep. Yep. I completely agree with you. Yeah, yeah sorting them is, just, just yeah, yeah. I agree completely. So, uh, in my opinion, this is one of the one of the best items, uh, one of the best modules in in SDL, which I personally love a lot. But I think that it can be quite nicely tied up so that we do not have a crazy cat on the right. <laughs> That's it.